Lonlon in the goals. He's, he's not bad, is he? He's not bad at all. When the director came up to me in 2012, I was very, very surprised that uh, I haven't heard anything about this story before. And uh, uh, um, yeah, and I think it's one of those stories when you read it, you think it, it cannot be true because it's it has so many different aspects in it. It's you know, on one hand, it's it's a story about this you know football icon, about this man who was a German soldier who. A, a former Nazi paratrooper who becomes a prisoner of war in the UK and then becomes Manchester City's goalkeeper against, you know, uh, post-war protest, British uh, protest. And uh, and it has so, and it's a love story as well. It's about someone who finds a, a new home. And, and, and he, he always said his education began in England where he, you know, we learned about a different political system where he learned about democracy and that, that so it's it has so many different aspects in this story and that I was immediately fascinated by it. What's going on? And why is my elf not playing? Is that Ian from Warrington? I thought Ian had been dropped. No, no, that's not that's not Ian. That's um. I think that, that could be, uh... Why is he waving at me? No idea. That's it! Come on! We're going! Alfie! Al Alfie! Where are you going? What's going on? Alfie! I am going to kill Dad. Are you football fans? Did you know much about Bert Tramlin before you got involved with this? Or? Me, no. I did not. I am not a football fan. I, 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 I'm a sports appreciator I understand the sort of like fanatical aspect of and passion around sport um because I get that myself but I knew nothing of his life or his story but it's amazing actually in the UK how different some people have never the younger generations especially have you know not not heard of him and then um, you get people who are absolutely you know devout sort of admirers of his so he is a very yeah He's kind of an icon in Manchester, especially. Absolutely, is he, yeah. Is he as well known in, in Germany as he is over here? Or? No, he's not that well known. Right. Um, um, I think he. Um, I haven't heard of him before. I haven't heard of his story, and uh, um, but I yeah we we hope the film changes that. You have a lot to talk to me. Barbara, you need to leave for school now. I said now. I would, I'm not some kind of monster. Well, there's some folk around here might say different. Hating me is an easy way. An easy way? What are you talking about? You think you just come here and play some football and everything's forgiven and forgotten? You know, I, I, I think it was really interesting, um, you know, doing doing a, a film that's that's a real story and also that, that is speaking about, about a very specific era. There's sort of endless amounts of research that you can do to get into that mindset. So for me, it was reading a lot about, uh, you know, sort of the civilian experience throughout the Second World War, as, you know, 90% of Great Britain, you know, remained civilians throughout that time. So it was getting a, an insight into the world that she would have grown up in and the mindset that she would have had uh, throughout that time to then meet a German man and for, you know, for what that would mean to her and represent to her, which, which is amazing because then, you know, throughout that, that prejudice and throughout the, that sort of hardened opinion of who he is and through, I guess, scapegoating him in a way and him representing everything that's sort of, that's, you know, that's gone wrong and everything that's happened to, to her and, and Great Britain, she's then able to see his his humanity and she can't deny his his humanity and the things that make him touching and passionate and interesting as an individual and she sees herself in in those things as well and and so absolutely I think they're both kindred spirits with very very different backgrounds you have an iron cross there are thousands who have it it doesn't mean anything and what about volunteering you said you didn't have a choice and then I have to hear that you volunteered I need to know the truth. The truth about what? About you. About what's going on in that crowd head of yours. You don't want to know. But I do. I mean, how is this marriage supposed to work? 
It has to be built on trust. You have to trust me. What was Marcus like as a director? <laughs> he was very, he's, he's great. I think he's very enthusiastic and he played football himself. Uh, and, and so uh, it's, it's, it's always very difficult to get the, you know, the football scenes right. And, um, and I, was, yeah, I was very happy, I was very lucky that, we were very lucky that we have him as a director because he put all of his energy into those scenes. Mm. And he tried to copy, you know, the, 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 all the games, he tried to copy, copy completely. So it's a, so it's all real and, and and of course the reactions from the from all the extras they were amazing. I mean we we always saw him running behind camera, you know, playing the whole game just him, and uh, throwing him on the pitch and, and just you know to have some reactions from the crowd and and that really showed his energy and so that so all the, so that all those football scenes were very authentic. Football is like a wonderful dance. It's bloody barbaric. Not if you look closely. Do you have a girlfriend? No. No girl at home. What did Thompson want? He wants me to come to Man City for a trial. I think you're pulling my plunker, Bert. <laughs> Manchester City goalkeeper, Bert Troutman. You were awarded several medals, including the Iron Cross. I need to know the truth. The truth about what? About you! Bert has only learned how to do two things. Be a soldier and be a footballer. I didn't know him as a soldier. I only know him as a man. There's no war in this dressing room. Hold his head. Hold his head. He knows, he knows. You've always a goalkeeper.